Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. We're also streaming to you live at yorbamedia.com and broadcasting to you from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Clear Channel Studios. All right. Uh, as a return appearance, I've got Bill Sumpe, CEO, T3 Motion, on the show with me for the next couple of segments. Ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a rare treat. We're going to get a look on the inside of a CEO of a publicly traded company where we can talk about the inner mechanics, private, public, and what's going on with Bill's company, too. Now, let me not forget Symbol. T is in Tom, T is in Tom, T is in Tom, M is in Mary. Look that one up. This guy's got something that's, well, I'm pretty impressed with. Uh, all right, Bill, welcome back to the show. How have you been? Fantastic. Thank you very much for having me back today. All right, my pleasure. You know, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that you slowed down a little bit for us so that what we can do is look inside the, the, the mind and the mindset of a CEO of a publicly traded company that's gone from private to public. And could you open that up for our listeners so that they can see what really goes on in your life and some of the, the, the benefits, you know, the pluses, the minus and the problems that you had to deal with were taking by, by having a private company and then turning it into a public company? You know, and I have to tell you, that's a big discussion. Yep. So, um, as you know, I came out of private industry for about 40 years. You know, and this was my first experience in a public environment. So I came into uh, T3 Motion, TTTM, uh, one year and one week ago. When I was put in office by the board, you know, they brought me in because the company had significant operational problems, and they were with manufacturing and, and finance and, and all different aspects of running the business. And they had been bringing in high-priced executives that had – you know, an experience in uh, the computer industry and, and, you know, all different types of, of industries. And these guys were coming in, making some pretty big checks, but they had never run a small business. And the business that we had at hand here at T3 was really a small business, although we were public, you know, and sales were about 5 to $6 million a year. You know, we were still a very small business. and But yet, you know, with all the responsibilities of being a large, fully reporting NYSE, you know, public company. So when I first got here, you know the the challenges were widespread. So some of the some of the things that you've got to deal with in a public environment, of course, just don't come into play in a private environment. You don't have auditors. You don't have all the reporting, you know, requirements. You don't have the, the requirement to file eight Ks of material events for the company. You just don't have the level of scrutiny and oversight that you do. You know, in a, in a private environment, you kind of do things when they need to be done or when you feel like it's the right time to do them. In a public environment, you do them by the rules and you do them when they have to be done and you have those deadlines. And and so, you know, it really uh, has helped me gain a lot of appreciation, you know, for the SEC, for actually the way the markets are run, you know, and the way that the financial community operates here in regards to Wall Street, uh, you know, public companies. Now, let's talk about the uh, – so there's a lot of extra workload you just brought up. That, that, that's the, the downside of being a publicly traded company. Um, give, me, give me some ideas on where you found the upside to be far, far and above what, you've had to, what you had to work with on a private company. You know, and, and there is a lot of upside. And, and as you mentioned, there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, extra bandwidth and things like that's required. I – I, you know, I used to read stories here, whether it was in the journal or Barron's or anywhere else you hear in the news about a CEO of a public company somewhere, whether it be an HP or an eBay or, or whatever it may be, or even smaller companies. You know, and you'd read these big salaries, and these guys were making a million, two million, five million dollars a year running a public company. And I used to think, you know, wow, they've got this big company here, and they're making these huge checks. And you got to wonder, you know, do they earn their money? Well, the first thing I'd like to tell you is, Having been a guy for 40 years in small manufacturing companies and technology companies, as guys that run public companies do more work than I ever imagined. And they've got the responsibility, you know, for all these different areas that go way beyond, you know, just their skills as a, as a business person or a negotiator or something like that or an operations person. So, you know, first thing I'd like to, to do is uh, applaud the guys that run public companies because it is a lot of work. So, um, you know, obviously the benefits are you've got uh, much better visibility. So as an example, as a public company, when you go into a, uh, whether it's an announcement for a new product or you've got any type of financial reporting or new agreements that you enter into on the company's behalf or things like that, of course, you've got shareholders. And that information, you know, has to be put out in the form of press releases or 8Ks if they're material events, you know, to the market and to the shareholders to let them know the changes that are going on within the company in a private environment. Again, you know, you don't have to do any of that. As a matter of fact, you know, in a, in a private environment, when you do a press release, you know, you hope, you know, and you pray that somebody somewhere is going to pick that darn release up and publish it for you. 
one of the great benefits of being public is when you put a press release out there, of course, because it affects shareholders all over the country and all over the world, you know, you've got all your financial sites and all your reporting, whether it be Yahoo's or Google's or, or Market Watch or any of the other, you know, significant financial resources around the world here and around the globe that, that really report that information. So you get, you know, great access, you know, in terms of pre- you know, presenting your information to the markets and, and to prospective clients as well. Um, you know, some of the other benefits that I find in being public is you really have the ability because everything that you do, you know, is already audited. You've got financial reports that are reliable. You know, you've got uh, regular reporting and things like that that are filed every quarter with your cues. So, of course, even in terms of your ability to raise capital and to, uh, you know, be, be considered uh, even for financing, I mean, you've got a, a much better record there that's, that's a much more reliable record for, for financing organizations to be able to look at. It sounds, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I can see that there's, as far as the, the career path and, and the path that you're doing, going with your business is definitely the way to go, uh, even though the higher workload is there. Let's, you mentioned new products. Uh, let's talk about you and your company now for a second. It, it, technology is, is big in what you've done, and I'd like to hear if there's any, uh, any new things on the technology front with, with uh, uh, T3. Sure. So, so T3, when I came into T3, we were an electric stand-up vehicle uh, technology uh, type of manufacturer, and, and uh, you know, we've had great success. We're distributed in over 30 countries around the world. We've got a, a product that we pioneered, the three-wheel technology in law enforcement. You know, whether it's the CIA, the Secret Service, or the streets of Dallas are, are patrolled with our vehicles. So, you know, we've had a, a great success with that product, and we're looking for new markets. We're constantly growing our international uh, distribution for that product. Matter of fact, we've got, you know, large orders out of South Africa right now. The South African police and, and the uh, Passenger Rail Association in South Africa are stepping up into agreements with us. We uh, signed an $800,000 order here right at the beginning of the year for the, you know, Praza High Speed Rail, uh, you know, program in South Africa, protecting all their terminals and, and facilities. And so, you know, we do well in that market, but we're looking to expand our, our uh, reach into light materials handling, into the handicap markets and things like that, growing the product line. Because, of course, as a public company, one of the downsides of being a public company is you do incur a lot of extra overhead. So while you may run a $5 million company, a private company, and be able to be profitable, when you start factoring in all the costs that it, you know, that it costs the company to be public, you know, with auditors and, and all the rest of these accounting fees and just reporting fees and exchange fees and listing fees and, you know, all the rest of it. I mean, it gets expensive, so it's tough to make money doing $5 million a year. So we need to grow the company. We need to go grow distribution. We need to grow the product line to get us into new markets. So as we're looking to expand what the company does today, I come from 40 years, you know, in the entertainment and in the uh, you know automation industry, even in security so I've got a great background over the last 20 to 25 years building high technology products. Matter of fact, I've got patents today that are licensed by companies like GE Security, Alarm.com on the internet, uh, you know, in use, uh, you know, worldwide. So I've got a, a big background in wireless and in notification technologies and automation. And I'm trying to find ways right now to grow this company into some of those markets. I'd like to get us involved in a number of security-related fields, specialized fields working with government and law enforcement, where we've got a significant number of relationships. I mean, having relationships with companies such as or entities, I'm sorry, or organizations, agencies such as the Los Angeles Police Department or you know the New York Police Department or Dallas Police Department, things like this. We've got a lot of contacts. You know, and I'm looking for ways here to grow our product line that will allow us to take new technology to those agencies, to those government bodies around the world. And I think that we're on to some neat things here. So, uh, you know, we've actually got some developments we're working on in-house, uh, hoping to, uh, you know, find uh, ways to, uh, to expand that. That's going to work. Hey, let's do this. Let's take a break now. Go to a commercial break. And on the other side of the uh, um, other break on the next segment, let's see if we can talk about uh, recapitalization, what you're doing internally with the company, aside from just the, the markets. And uh, um, also, I really want to hear what's going on with your Texas facility, all right? Fantastic. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. We'll be right back with Bill Sumpy's CEO, T3 Motion, T as in Tom, 3 the number, motion, M-O-T-I-O-N dot com, symbol on the company, T-T-T-M. Look it up. These guys are going places. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. We're also streaming to you live on yorbamedia.com and broadcasting to you from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Clear Channel Studios. 
All right, I'm joined on the show now with Bill Sumpy, CEO T3 Motion, symbol TTTM. And uh, Bill, when we when we left off, we were talking about um, getting into the internals of your company. I know you can't sell, tell us everything that's going on be, uh, on the insider trading rules, but give us an insight as to what you've been able to accomplish on the inside of your company and where and why it's it's really going to go places. Uh, thank you, Michael, and, and great to be here again. Um, you know, when we got here, when I got here in office, uh, which was, I had my one-year anniversary uh, about uh, 53 weeks ago, so I've been here for a year and a week. When I got here, the company had been losing anywhere from 500000 to $750,000 a month in cash, you know, since its inception. Of course, a lot of that money went into product development. It's not cheap to develop electric vehicle technology. So as I came into office again, coming from a small business environment, you know, I look at what was going on here, and aside from all the associated costs, you know, with being public, I needed to find ways to make the company more efficient and to be able to, you know, uh, make it profitable. I mean, I mean, that's what business is all about, right? I mean, business that isn't profitable doesn't make money. What's the point? So, you know, I came in. We were losing five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars a month in two thousand twelve. I got into office in the end of the first quarter, two thousand thirteen. When I got here, we were in a position that we were burning, you know, more than $6 million a year today. And the company was incurring that debt, by the way. It wasn't just losing the money. It was having to borrow the money mm. to pay that to pay that overhead. So what I've done since I've got here in the last year, and we've got our reports coming out here shortly, is I've been able to run the company on only $500,000 of additional debt my first year in office. So I went from losing $525,000 a month to basically losing – you know, in cash, about $500,000 is all it took to finance a whole last year's operation. So, you know, we've done a tremendous amount of things here to correct the problems that we had. So when you go back and you look at the company, and I'm, I'm sure that you've got very responsible and diligent investors that listen to your show, you know, we have done everything that we can do and more to ensure that T3 has a profitable future going forward. So where we used to have to build 550 vehicles a quarter to be profitable or to break even, today we can actually break even at 120 vehicles a quarter. We've cut our payroll costs by getting rid of all the high-priced executives that we had here, honestly, that weren't doing a very good job, I might say. You know, cut our payroll costs by 80%. I mean, our, our cost of goods. We used to buy a lot of parts overseas, and you think that buying overseas is always the economical way to go. Well, let me tell you, you know, I'm a believer in made in America. I'm an American. I love, you know, the building and, and running businesses here. You know, in the United States of America, and I'm doing everything I can to ensure that this product, you know, will be 99% made in America. There's a few things you just can't get here. You got to go overseas for. So uh, we're improving quality. Uh, we've taken about 35% out of the cost of building our product here in the last dang nine months. So um, again, we had bomb costs that were significantly high. We had gross margins that were 19.8% when I came into office. I believe here in the first quarter of 2014, we've doubled those margins or better. I think we're above 40% based on what I can tell from our current operation. So, bravo. You know, there's a lot to do. I was going to say bravo. You know what I like better than, than made in America? Made in Texas. Tell us about that. There you go. Made in Texas. So that, that brings up a great point. So, uh, you know, I love made in Texas as well, as we had talked about before. We've got a facility that's running there now in Carrollton, Texas, uh, just outside of Dallas. We've got a manufacturing facility there, and actually we're building vehicles every day down in Dallas. Uh, matter of fact, even some of the orders that are going into South Africa, I mean, they're flying out of there even this week at a DFW, you know, into Johannesburg. So, uh, you know, the Texas operations are doing a great job down there. It took us a little while to get that ramped up, but we're expanding uh, the programs that we're running there, and, and our distribution in Texas is expanding also. I mentioned before we were working on this order for – you know, uh, 80 units uh, to the Dallas Police Department. They had six on the streets uh, as of about uh, six months ago. They're growing that, you know, and we've developed a whole new vehicle in combination with the Dallas police officers. So we had Dallas police officers, and, and we brought them out here to California and said, listen, you know, why don't you guys come in and help us build and design the next generation of T3 patroller for use by law enforcement worldwide. Give us your feedback after using them on the streets of Dallas for six months. Tell us what you like and what you don't like, what we do right and what we can do better. They came out here. We spent time with them, and we developed a new what we call elite series of vehicle. It's got air ride suspension. You know, it's got better power options. It's faster. It's just better handling. You know, uh, I mean, it's just a really, really advanced type of vehicle, most advanced vehicle in the space anywhere in the world. And we're now selling those vehicles into other cities in Texas. I think we've had three other cities here alone in the last three months. 
you know, order vehicles uh, there, uh, you know, out of our dealer in Dallas. We've got a great dealer in Arlington, John Wright and Associates. Actually, they they are our premier dealer here in the country. So uh, the guys that do the best job for us are headquartered right there uh, outside of Dallas and Arlington. Wow. Dad, bravo. We're re- very happy to have you on the show and know that you're an employer of our local in- economy. You're helping create commerce right here at home, Ground Zero. All right, let's 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 switch gears just a little bit and talk about new markets that you're approaching. You, you touched on it last segment, but I want you to bring that out and let everybody know where you're going to be as, as you expand your operations. Sure. So, um, you know, again, I believe that our current operations, which are growing significantly internationally, will probably double as my goal here in 2014. So as we've taken all the cost out of the vehicle, I mean, excuse me, out of the vehicle and out of the business, you know, we've got ourselves where we can hit that break-even or profitability number. I had actually personally expected that we were going to get there in the first quarter. I can tell you that the second quarter is going to be better than the first. You know, we're not there yet. We've got huge orders looming you know they're they're not uh, they're not solidified yet, but our our orders and sales activity levels are probably quadruple what they've ever been in the company's history. So we are continuing to grow our sales uh, team here and grow our efforts. We've built the internal marketing department. You know we've really you know built the company in a way that we can grow sales and we're expanding international distribution. We've just announced here last quarter new agreements into Southeast Asia. So we're going into the Philippines. We're going into, you know, Vietnam. We're going into Cambodia, into a lot of the Southeast Asian countries. And and we actually are having some pretty good results there. I mean, all the airports and things like that are beginning to deploy our vehicles over there. So, uh, you know, we're growing international distribution. Then as we look at growing the product line, again, you know, I really have a, a really strong desire and I'm working daily on trying to take us into these new high tech industries with the surrounding the wireless security and automation systems. So, you know, as you know, everything in the world is going wireless. So whether that be your cell phone, your wireless internet, your wireless laptop or whatever it is, I mean, even this, even the Edison companies these days are reading your utility meters for wireless network. So the days of being tethered by cords are behind us. You know, with our presence in law enforcement, we've got relationships that give us huge inroads, you know, into government agencies and, and uh, you know, uh, local uh, governments as well. So, you know, we've got some projects. I'm, I'm holding back here. I can't really discuss it, but right. we are clearly working on technology that are going to let us expand into new technologies and new markets you know, things that will complement what we do today and allow us to capitalize on the markets that we're in. I can start to connect those dots because if you, you've you already mentioned a number of uh, um, government entities that really are super, super high-tech and been known for super high-tech. And so what I'm doing is I'm connecting the dots here. It tells me that you're, you're able to take some of their latest technology and integrate it into your vehicles as we go forward. Yeah, you know, I'll That's... give you I'll give you one one project here. And we've, we've had this... Uh, announced previously they were working on something. I'm going to give you an example. Okay. This is something that's on the on the radar here for 2014. I hope here in the first half of the year, if we're lucky, and we can get all the, all the rest of the development done. So as an example, you go to a local police, uh, I mean, you go to a local airport or to a shopping center, or we're, we're driving down the street in city streets. You see police cars all over the streets of Dallas or any other major city in the country these days. And law enforcement vehicles are equipped with cameras, and those cameras have what's called LPR technology built in, they're license plate readers. So we're working on some new technology regarding automation for the uh, uh, law enforcement community that will allow them to basically take one of our vehicles, you know, at an entrance to a DFW, as an example, and be able to screen every single car that goes in or out of that airport, identifying and even looking at NCIC records for in the criminal databases for suspects and things like that that may be, you know, whether even a terrorist database where they may be entering into the airport area trying to head them off before they ever get to a terminal building. So... I mean, that's just one example of types of technology we're working on. You know, our technology, of course, different than what's in a police car. Our stuff is being designed so that it can be portable. We've got some new, you know, all new methods that I can't really talk about because we haven't got the, the patent filed on it yet. But, uh, you know, we are going to completely enhance the efforts of law enforcement internationally with the use of our products. Where can somebody go to get a hands-on with this? Because not only is it, uh, it law enforcement that, that you, these vehicles can be used for, but also I would imagine that there's civilian uses too. Yeah, there, there are. And, and, you know, we're in shopping malls and, and facilities like that, even campuses. You go to Los Angeles, you got campuses like USC has 30 units on the campus program there for their security staff to ride. 
you know, you go to sometimes hospitals even, or a lot of regional shopping centers all over the country use these vehicles to patrol the parking lots. I mean, you know, we've been working on some, I mean, you've got a Target. We've got Target has more than 200 of these things installed at 200 different locations around the country in Target retail. That's centers. what so, I wanted to know. There we go. So, you know, there's a lot of commercial use as well, as well as educational use. We've got that new vehicle, the T3 Vision. T3 Vision is more of what we call a personal transporter. It's designed really for more personal use. You know, we're working on programs that are going to deploy those vehicles into college campuses as part of a college-funded uh, uh, tuition program. So maybe when you sign up at uh, you know, your local university, you'll be able to sign up and have your tuition actually include the use of an ESV, one of our vision vehicles, for use getting back and forth between the dorms, you know, and, and the different classes. You know, it's such a great tool to be used in a campus environment or electric. You know, they'll run for a whole week you know, on a charge just between dorms and, and, and the classrooms. You know, there's no parking problems with them, and they're green and efficient, 10 cents a day or less wow. to drive these things around. So uh, there's a lot of markets here that, where we have, uh, you know, application outside of government law enforcement, for sure. Bill, we've got to go, but thank you. It's been a real pleasure having you back on the show. Talk to you soon. Michael, thanks again. Thank you. You're welcome. Bill Sumpus, CEO, T3 Motion, T T is in Tom, three in the numerical three, motion.com, symbol TTTM. And special thanks to Monk Media and 1 800 Public Relations.com for all their PR and media support. We've got Daniel Gorfine, Director of Financial Markets and Legal Counsel for the Milken Institute, up next with our crowdfunding and impact investing correspondent, Vince Molinari. We'll be right back.